Hey, what's going on guys? Tom Davis here, America's Canine Educator. Thank you so much for joining me today. Seriously, thank you guys. You guys are the absolute best. I can't believe how much we've grown and the support and the love and the community that we've, we've grown over the years is incredible. So thank you guys so much. I'm super stoked to present this episode to you guys because there's so much, not only dog training, but a ton of dog behavior in this episode. I completely geeked out over this episode. I was super excited. And this is gonna be covering not only different ways to reward your dog, but the importance of making sure that you time your reward-based systems properly. And also making sure that your leash pressure and any type of pressure you present to your dog is also timed properly to your dog because it can create a lot of conflict and confusion if your reward-based system and your pressure-based system is completely off with your dog. You're doing them at the wrong times. So I know it sounds kind of silly to say, wow, how can giving a dog a reward at the wrong time make things worse? Well, in this episode, I'm gonna go over exactly how that can happen. This dog is extremely leash uh, reactive, not aggression. This dog actually goes to daycare, but we just have a ton of leash reactivity on the leash and they live down in a big city. And so obviously it's almost impossible to bring the dog out without a ton of frustration on the leash. So for me guys, not every dog is built the same. Not every training method is built for each individual dog and their owners. And so in this episode, you're gonna go through, hey, let's take some equipment off. Let's add some more positive uh, reward-based systems. Let's, let's figure out your timing. Let's make sure we're saying the right things. What are we actually gonna reward the dog with? Are we gonna use food or toys or verbal? So again, it's leash reactivity, it's behavior, it's handling so much into this video. I'm gonna stop talking. Support me by just liking this video really quick, guys. Leaving a comment in the comments below. We're gonna do a giveaway in the middle of this video, so don't forget to watch the whole thing. And of course, you guys can cop yourself some No Bad Dog merch. Let's get into the video. Place. Good place. Good. I want to go over some rewarding type schedules and when to reward, when to correct, because I think that it's you're having a hard time. It seems maybe to like when do we reward, right? So this is something that a lot of people have a hard time with. So I'm going to walk you through like a reward schedule. You could also mess the dog's training up by not knowing when to reward and rewarding too much and rewarding not at the right time and all that stuff. So I wanna go over that. I want you to really be paying attention to how you're presenting everything with the dog. See how she's getting worked up here? So instead of like going, like if I walked here, she's gonna to continue to build and rise because she's not like aggressive where she's gonna go and try to attack this dog, but she's certainly to a point where she's like, <laughs> Like you can literally hear it breathing. So you're gonna turn, Luna, heel, yes. So dogs don't need food or anything to be rewarded also. I think that that's like a misconception too for most dog owners. She, I don't need to pay her with anything other than good heel, good sit. That's all they really need. Good, up, sit, yes, good. So if she offers me that calm, type of behavior, I'll pay her for that. Let's stay. Good. I removed myself so she can see the other dog clearly. So see, she looked at the dog. So that's where I should have paid her, but I'm trying to pay, I'm trying to pay you to pay her. So when she looks at the dog she, and she burps, <laughs> then I pay her, yes. So, she, so you wanna, when you're rewarding and you're using food, you wanna have your treats ready, okay? So she's looking at the dog Luna, sit. Yes, good sit. All right, you guys, giveaway time. All you guys have to do as usual is in the comments, in the comments below, individually, leave your dog's name letter by letter by letter in the comments below to enter your chance to win a free No Bad Dogs hat. I'm gonna be giving away two and I'll announce the winners within 24 hours. Ready, set, break, go. So I'm trying to modify a behavior. I'm not trying to distract a behavior. I'm not trying to avoid a behavior. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for her, when I get up here, I'll be neutral here. So I'm not 
or I'm not. Because look, look where her attention, which is not a bad thing. This is a reward. This is, hey, good job. It's a token of you've done a good job. But only after what? After she's completed the task. Good. Uh -uh. Luna, sit. Yes, good sit. So that was good. I'm going to move backwards so she's in direct contact with Bentley, which she was just reactive to. She looks at him. Yes, good. I'm ready to go again if I need to. Luna. Uh -uh. Luna. Yes, good. Yep, good. It's very a matter of fact. I'm compartmentalizing things. So the other thing is, is I have a tug. Luna, sit. Good. So when am I gonna reward her here with the tug? I'll show you, right? So I'm gonna stand here. Good. So what I try to do too is I'm gonna isolate myself away from the other dog to see where her focus is. So I come over here and she's right up, she's clicking her head all the way back to look at me. So I'm gonna pay her here if she makes a good decision. Luna, Luna, yes, good girl. She's just, she, she has this, so she looks at him and she stares 10, 15 seconds and then she doesn't do anything, looks back up at me, I'm paying her for that. There's some types of training methods that prefer never to correct the dog or tell him no. That's fine, that's, that's, that's one way to do it. For me, with the majority of dogs that I work with and the clients that I work with, they find it more comfortable to train like they would kids. Like if your kid just took a bowl of oatmeal and smashed it off the thing, you're not gonna say, hmm, how do we avoid this situation next time? It's assertiveness to say, hey, that's inappropriate. I don't want that to happen again. Because the problem with that behavior is it's gonna happen to this then the computer and then everything else and they're getting away with all this and it perpetuates. So how you punish and correct a dog is predicated off of the dog always. I'm not gonna say every dog needs this, every dog needs that. I like to help as many people as I can. I'm not one dimensional in anything that I do. Always gotta try new stuff to keep it, you know? Does that make sense? Yeah. So what you guys, okay, so see how you're building? <laughs> So let's try this. Just pop over, pop over here. Go into a sit. Sit. Stay. So next time, don't wait three Lunas to correct. Just Luna sit. She knows sit. She's like, make me. So don't let her take advantage of you. If you ask her to sit and she's like, nope, 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 nope. Luna sit, pressure. Does that make sense? Okay, try back. Stop. Luna, sit. Little pressure up. There you go. Good sit. I want to switch something really quick. I want to see if this works better for her. Cause she's too, she like, so she's like too explosive on those corrections, which happens sometimes. Cause dogs are sometimes too sensitive to, to that correction. So I want you to just correct her with this, which is just a slip. Sit. Good. Yes. Perfect. Try this. Okay, the other way. Sit. Little pressure. Just, yep, good. So, instead of, well, first of all, much better, right? She re reacts to that better. And that's okay. Sometimes the prong collar is too intense. That's, that's fine. It's, it's normal for that to happen. So when, when you're using that, it's a little less confrontational. So what happens with her behavior is she starts to build and load. So she starts do, 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 and then we correct her and then she explodes a little bit. It's all timing, so watch. Luna, sit. Yes, good sit. So I got her attention and made her sit when I start to see the build. Sit, yes. 
Good. Luna heel. Luna sit. Yes, good. Luna heel. Ah, sit. Yes, good. Good, so next time, say her name, register her name, and tell her to sit. And this is dog training for you and Luna. So everything that I do with all my clients is very dictated off you guys. I don't. Now she's building, stop and sit. Luna, sit. Luna, sit. She's looking at you, yes, pay her. Perfect, 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 perfect. Ding, 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 okay. So you came this way. Starts to build a little bit. If you see a dog in the streets walking in the city, she starts to build. Stop. Say her name. Ask her to sit. Wait. Dog walks by. Yes. Pay her. That's what's going to work. Because some dogs are too much for certain owners. They just are. That happens a lot here. I mean, they're just a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know I certainly did. Don't forget to like this video. Absolutely smash that subscribe button. We put videos like this out every single week, if not twice a week, sometimes even three times a week. Anyway, I freaking love this video and I put it out just to help uh, you guys out at home. My way certainly isn't the highway, guys. I never try to portray that like I know everything because I certainly don't. I'm just trying to help you guys out with some more information and some techniques and some things that you guys can maybe do to hopefully save a dog's life, save a dog's relationship and frustration with you. Just, just geeking out over dog training stuff. I absolutely love it. I hope you guys love it. I talk to you next time. Peace.